Washington, the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump is over and lawmakers on both sides of the aisle said they hope to move forward, concentrating on the plethora of competing crises in the country. Trump was acquitted in a 57,43 vote Saturday of inciting an insurrection at the U.S. Capitol last month. The Senate trial was historic, marking the first time a president had been impeached and tried twice, and the vote marked the most bipartisan push for conviction of a president in U.S. history, with seven Republicans joining all Democrats to convict. Democrats had argued that before the country and members of Congress could heal and move forward, Trump needed to be held accountable through the impeachment process. Process. Now, they say, the country can move forward. And there is a lot to focus on, including the still raging COVID-19 pandemic and economic downturn. Representative Jamie Raskin, D, MD, who led the House impeachment prosecution team, said his focus would now be on the future. From here, he said, it's time for us to get back to real democracy. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, D, California, said the House would be moving forward to make sure that this never happens again and would investigate and evaluate what caused this in terms of the motivation of the rioters who stormed the building and of the security at the Capitol. Senator Rick Scott, R. Florida, said in a statement now that impeachment was done, it's time to get back to work. Fellow Republican Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas agreed saying he hoped the end of this process would allow temperatures to finally settle and for us to work in a bipartisan fashion moving forward. It's true, we face many challenges ahead as a nation, but, I remain confident there are brighter days ahead, he added. It's time for Congress to get back to the work of the American people. Senator Jack Reed, D. R.I., agreed and argued that even while Congress and the country was officially turning the page on the Trump presidency with Saturday's acquittal vote, Congress still had to do its oversight work of his four years in office. As much as it'd like to turn the page from the disgraceful Trump era, Congress still must perform its investigative and oversight responsibilities to determine all the facts and uncover evidence that has been concealed, he said. Washington. The question on everyone's lips after the Senate voted Saturday to acquit former President Donald Trump was, what now? The riot January 6 at the Capitol revealed festering, violent anger over national politics. The House charged Trump with inciting the insurrection that left five dead. But while a majority of the Senate voted to convict, it fell short of the two-thirds majority required to convict, which would have allowed the Senate to bar him from future office. Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, one of seven Republicans who joined Democrats in voting against Trump, worried about the hatred over politics. The country is divided, said Murkowski, who won the right, in campaign after losing in the Republican primary. And the country has chosen sides in a way that, as we can see, can be very aggressive and can lead to violence. More. McConnell says Trump's crescendo of conspiracy theories caused Capitol riot and open question is how much Trump will loom over the Republican Party while out of office. He thanked his supporters shortly after the Senate verdict and vowed to continue in politics. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, R. K. Y., voted to acquit Trump. But then he assailed the former president in a Senate speech as practically and morally responsible for the violence of January 6. They did this because they had been fed wild falsehoods by the most powerful man on earth because he was angry he had lost an election, McConnell said. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, D, California, called McConnell pathetic for not holding a trial sooner and helping convict Trump. The dispute signals continued division as the House and Senate negotiate President Joe Biden's proposal to spend $1.9 trillion in relief for the COVID-19 pandemic. Tragically, Senate Republicans who voted not to convict chose to abandon the Constitution, the country and the American people with this vote. Pelosi said. Murkowski still has the riot gear at her office in the Capitol, which was near windows where the mob burst through on January 6. The hall was strewn with trash after the attack. She heard a police officer retching in the bathroom after getting sprayed with pepper spray. She finds herself discouraged with the current state of politics. Politics is rough and tumble and we understand that. And, I'd love to think that we can argue back and forth about the merits of whether or not we need to increase the minimum wage or what we need to do on trade policy. Murkowski said, let's argue it, let's debate it, let's have wins, let's have losses. 
But let's stop this hatred. Let's stop trying to denigrate the other side so that we can gain the advantage. Let's just talk about our good ideas. Bart Jansen Washington, House Democratic lawmakers leading the impeachment case against former President Donald Trump defended their decision not to call more witnesses despite the Senate's vote earlier Saturday to allow witness testimony. In a press conference following the Senate's vote to acquit Trump, Rep. Jamie Raskin, D. M. D., one of the lead lawmakers presenting the case, said more witness testimony would not have convinced Republicans. More, Rep. Jamie Herrera Butler would have testified under oath. Spokesman says we could have 500 witnesses and it would not have overcome the kinds of arguments being made by Mitch McConnell and other Republicans, he said. I made the call, he said. So if you want to blame somebody, it would be me. Dash Nicholas Wu President Joe Biden is responding to the acquittal of Donald Trump by stating that all Americans, especially the nation's leaders, have a duty and responsibility to defend the truth and to defeat the lies. Biden says that in doing so, that is how we end this uncivil war and heal the very soul of our nation. That is the task ahead and it's the task we must undertake together. The new president also says that violence and extremism has no place in America. The White House issued Biden's statement late Saturday night, several hours after the Senate failed to muster the two-thirds vote needed to convict Trump of incitement in the attack on the U.S. Capitol. The 57,43 vote included seven members of Trump's own Republican Party. In looking back on the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol and Trump's role in it, Biden says this sad chapter in American history is a reminder that democracy is fragile and must always be defended. He also says that the nation must be ever vigilant. Associated Press